Now it has been a while since I've managed to get the time to put together a pickups video but I do have a few sort of interesting pieces that I've picked up over the last couple of months and if you're interested in that you just wait until after these Now as per normal I will be showing the items that I've picked up over the last few months in chronological order. Starting with of course the most recent and working our way back to that juicy retro at the end. And to start with it's a game that I should have picked up a long time ago. It's Jedi Fallen Order. Now don't get me wrong I did play Fallen Order when it first was released and I honestly can't remember whether just something else better came along or this thing just didn't grasp my attention at the time. I have put a few more hours into it now and it's shaping up to be quite a decent game. I do have a few gripes with it and that is mainly the lack of fast travel because traversing these maps and the maps can be quite confusing in this game can be quite a chore at some times. So that's Jedi Fallen Order coming into the collection where it will stay forever and ever. Next up and staying with PlayStation 5 is an indie game that has just fairly recently been released and that game is Pacific Drive. Now this game wasn't even on my radar but a few weeks ago a good friend of mine picked this game up, gave it a playthrough and gave it a thumbs up. Now it might just be because I'm Generation X and a little bit long in the tooth but I will 100% take the recommendation of a friend over any sort of marketing campaign that the companies can put out themselves. I haven't had a chance to play Pacific Drive yet but it does look interesting. I will also point out that the wonderful Dylan over at Plipachook TV also gave this game a chance and he thought it was just a bit too buggy for him at the moment. But that's Pacific Drive coming into the collection. I will get round to playing it and when I do I'll let you know exactly how I felt about the game. Next up and still for the PlayStation 5 is another game that I should have picked up a little bit sooner and actually this is a sort of sequel to a game that I should have also picked up and that game is Two Point Campus. Now for anyone who knows Two Point Campus, it's obviously a spin-off from Two Point Hospital, which was obviously a spiritual successor to the wonderful Theme Hospital. Now probably one of the reasons that I held off in picking up the likes of Two Point Hospital and Two Point Campus is that I'm often very disappointed with spiritual successors. But I can happily point out that Two Point Campus doesn't really disappoint, well not that much. The humour's not exactly as 90s as I would like it to be, but there's enough of the humour in there to keep you amused and the gameplay is solid. The graphics are also fantastic but who am I kidding, the graphics from Team Hospital will I also believe they're still fantastic too. So that's Two Point Campus coming into the collection where it will stay forevermore. Next up and still for the PlayStation 5 because there is a fair bit of PlayStation 5 this month is a game that probably just slipped under my radar. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a fan of RPGs so how I managed to miss out Disciples Liberation is beyond me. But I did manage to stumble across this in a local video game store and when I saw that it was a strategy RPG, maybe a little bit CRPG, I just had to pick it up, get it into the collection and add it to the backlog. Because yes, there's a lot of games I've still to play before I get round to this one. I am looking forward to it, but Disciples Liberation in the collection where it will stay forever and it will definitely get played at some point. Next up, and yes, still for the PlayStation 5, well, this is not exactly a PlayStation 5 game. It's a remaster of a classic old game, and it's another RPG, and it's Tactics Ogre Reborn. Now, I didn't get to play Tactics Ogre back in the day because the Nintendo systems just weren't my thing. But let me tell you this, people, we are living in an absolute golden age when it comes to remakes, remasters and reimaginings of old video games. So when you get the opportunity to pick up a remake, a remaster or even a reimagining, then I heartily encourage you to pick that game up. Sometimes they are a far cry from the original source material and sometimes are almost just a straight port, but it's a modern way to play an old game and Tactics Ogre Reborn, happy to have it in the collection. I have put a little bit of time into this just to see how it plays and so far so good. So next up and staying with the PlayStation 5 and also staying with the theme of remakes, reboots and reimaginings, 
We have one of the games, well, one of many of the games that I was guaranteed to buy this year, and that is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now don't get me wrong, when it comes to Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth, I do have mixed feelings. Because Final Fantasy VII was such an important game to me back in the late 90s, and it's still an important game to me now. Trying to be subjective in the matter, however, I would say that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is just a little bit better than Remake. And I think objectively for me, it's because you get to run around the wonderful world of Final Fantasy VII in full HD, modern PlayStation. 5 graphics and the world is fully realised. Now that's not taking away the fact that Final Fantasy 7 is one of the greatest games, if not the greatest games of all time, and despite its graphical limitations, probably does a slightly better job when it comes to gameplay for me. And of course there's a sort of retelling of the story, a reimagining of the story of Final Fantasy 7 which doesn't always quite sit so well with me, but Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth was a game that was going to come into my collection regardless it's here now I have played through it and you know what give it a go if you liked remake you're going to like this one a little bit better next up is still for the PlayStation 5 and still on the very same theme of reboots remakes and reimaginings we have another game that I was definitely going to pick up this year and it's Persona 3 Reload now the Persona games for me started with Persona 5, which then I moved on to play Persona 5 Royal, two of probably the finest games that you'll ever play, which promptly spurred me on to play Persona 4, and I played both Persona 4 and Persona 4 Golden, and again, wonderful, wonderful games. So as soon as it was announced that Persona 3 was going to get a reload, then there was no doubt about it, I was going to pick this game up and play it in a much more modern setting. Now I don't mean modern settings as in changing the story of the game, it's the same game, it's just got some of those wonderful quality of life features and slightly tweaked and better graphics and sound than you got on the original game. Now I am only a few hours into Persona 3 Reload but so far it's also not letting me down. And one of the wonderful things I found about playing these games in reverse is that I get to see how they evolve. And very much like the Final Fantasy series from Final Fantasy right through to Final Fantasy 7, you can see the same sort of evolution happening in the Persona universe. So Persona 3 Reload had to come into the collection, I've started playing it already, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and I recommend that you pick it up too. Next up, and you might be happy to hear last for the PlayStation 5, is another game that sort of fits into that reboot remake of the Imagining. This time we're talking about a spiritual successor and another game that I was most definitely going to buy this year, and that is Ayudin Chronicles 100 Heroes. Now I'm not going to talk too much about Ayudin Chronicles because although I have played through the game I almost completely completed it in my first playthrough. I kind of want Ayudin Chronicles to have its own dedicated standalone video. What I will tell you about it is that it is a Sui Koden spiritual successor. It's Yoshitaka Muriyama's swan song and despite how sad most of us in the community were when Yoshitaka passed away, he did at least have the opportunity to leave us with a game that truly is a spiritual successor to his his wonderful Sui Coden series. And yes, as I've said, I've already played through this. It took me four days of gameplay, 75 hours. I love just about every minute of it. There are a few nitpicks that I will have with it in a dedicated video, but it's such a good game and I recommend anyone who's a fan of Sui Coden, anyone who's a fan of JRPGs, and especially anyone who's a fan of turn-based combat in their JRPGs to get their hands on Ayudin Chronicles 100 Heroes because this truly is a love letter to an era of gaming that people would like to see lost. But Ayudin Chronicles 100 Heroes is now in my collection, but it will most definitely stay forever and it will probably even be played on a yearly basis alongside the other Sui Coden games. Next up we're moving down a generation and onto the PlayStation 4 and the first game that I picked up for the PlayStation 4 sort of harkens back to my PC Master Race days of the early to mid 90s and it's Railway Empire. 
Now I haven't had a chance to pop in Railway Empire yet, but I'm sure it's going to be quite similar to the likes of Transport Tycoon and the like. And that's exactly the reason I decided to pick this game up when I saw it sitting on the local shop shelf. Now I'm not sure if I have the time these days to invest the time that I did back into Transport Tycoon and Railroad Tycoon, but it's nice to have a modern game sitting there that I can pop into the PlayStation 5 and just fire up at will. Having not been able to play this yet, I don't know how it will feel on a controller, but rather than a keyboard and mouse, but looking back on my pickup of Two Point Campus, then it seemed to work okay in there. I'm sure they've managed to work out all the kinks that are needed to replace a keyboard and mouse with a console controller, so Railway Empire coming into the collection that I'll get round to giving it a little bash at some time, and I hope it really does scratch that tycoon itch. Next up and last up for the PlayStation 4 is an RPG, more specifically a JRPG because, well, it's me, obvious. And the game that I picked up was in the recommendations of it, Chicken Village. You can check him out, I'll leave a link in the description to his channel down there. And that game is Lost Sphere. Now this particular game isn't a reboot, a remake or a reimagining of any classic game, but it is made in that style, so let's call it a spiritual successor to traditional Japanese role-playing games with fun-based combat. And if there's anything that's going to make me pick up a game other than a recommendation from the likes of John over at Chicken Fillets, it's a traditional Japanese role-playing game with turn-based combat. So thank you very much John for the recommendation to pick up Lost Sphere, I will get around to putting some proper time into it at some point, as you have seen there's a fair backlog already and as you can see a fair backlog increasing so Lost Sphere coming into the collection I will get round to playing it and I will let John know exactly how I felt about it at the end Next up, and staying with the same generation but moving away from Sony and onto Nintendo, yes it's time for some Switch games and I did pick up a couple of those over the last few months and the first one is Inspector Gadget Mad Time Party now I don't know about you, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for Inspector Gadget. Don't get me wrong, the only video game starring Inspector Gadget that I've ever played was the game on the ZX Spectrum, and let me tell you, that game was not good. So when I saw there was an Inspector Gadget game released for the Switch, I thought, why not give them another chance? Now I haven't had the opportunity to fire this up and play it yet, but I will be doing so soon, I'll be making some time, and a little bit further down in this pickups video, you'll probably see why I'm going to make some Inspector Gadget time, but Mad Time Party, the Inspector Gadget game, into the collection, where it will stay forever, and hopefully get its fair shake soon. Next up, and still for the Switch is not one game, not two games, not three games, but seven games. And I do love a compilation and that's exactly why I picked this up. Now it's probably because I was born in the 70s, grew up with early video games and early video games through the late 70s and early 80s compilations were a big deal. They even managed to make their way onto the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. You just don't see a great deal of them these days. So when 7 came along in the form of 7 Star Wars games, I had no option but to pick up the Star Wars heritage back on the Switch. And this does look like a fantastic option to pick up seven classic Star Wars games. You have on it Star Wars Racer, Republic Commando, The Force Awakens, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2. Now of course these particular ports to modern machines you can pick up digitally no problem but to release a full compilation of all seven of these games in one physical disc then you have got to pick that up. So the Star Wars Heritage Pack into the collection where it will stay forever more and I'll be able to dip into Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 really easily and even when I'm commuting and play Star Wars Racer wherever I want to. It's a must buy, go get it. Next up and still for the Switch is another recommendation and another recommendation from John over at Chicken Fillets. I don't think it's just a recommendation because John seems to talk about this particular game more often than I talk about either Stray Coding 2 or Final Fantasy 7 and that's saying something. And the game that he has recommended me to pick up and twisted my arm because obviously I didn't want to pick up another JRPG is Harvestella. Now I haven't played Harvestella yet, I've just had his recommendations. John, I will get round to popping this into the Switch and seeing just what all your hype is about. But I do trust him because one, he's a JRPG fan and two, he's Scottish. So he can't be that wrong, can he? Because 
I'm that, and I'm not that wrong. So Harvestella coming into the collection, where it will get played, and hopefully not embarrass John by being a bad game. So next up, we're moving down not one generation, but two generations, because I totally didn't find anything out there 360 related, because I never do anyway usually. No PlayStation 3 caught my attention, no GameCube, straight on to PlayStation 2, and everybody knows that I'm a big PlayStation 2 fan, and the first one that I picked up, that I'm going to show you today, is Inspector Gadget Mad Robots Invasion. And no, I haven't had the opportunity to play this gem yet, so I can't really tell you much about it. But now you know why I'm holding off and playing the Switch Inspector Gadget game, because I want to play the Switch, the PlayStation 2 and the ZX Spectrum and compare the three for a video for your viewing pleasure at some time down the line. So, Inspector Gadget Mad Robots Invasion coming into the collection because I absolutely love Inspector Gadget and I'm sure you do too. And it's going to live there forever and hopefully get played quite soon. Next up, and still for the PlayStation 2, is a subset completion, I believe. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, because I have finally picked up the third game for Star Trek that was released in the PlayStation 2, Conquest. Now, as I said, I believe this is a sort of a subset. I believe there's only three Star Trek games on the PlayStation 2 in PAL territories. Now, if I am wrong, drop down into the comments and let me know. Feel free to mock me as much as you like, but according to the wonderful app Game Eye, which is my preference when it comes to cataloguing my collection and making sure I don't buy doubles, the only three PAL Star Trek games that I've noticed for the PlayStation 2 in that particular service are the three that I now have. The final one being, of course, this Star Trek Conquest. It's into the collection. I'll get them all played back to back because, again, like the Inspector Gadget games, I'd like to play the three of them and then one dedicated video to each of those. Star Trek Conquest. Next up and last up for the PlayStation 2 is another game that wasn't recommended to me, I just happened to see it on someone's pickup. That someone was James over at Retro Import Gaming and I hate it when you guys put your pickups videos out there, show me stuff that I then have to go to buy that I don't need. But I think I'll be allowed this one because it's PlayStation 2 and it's an Activision Anthology. Now anyone who's an old school gamer and anyone who's got any passion about classic and vintage gaming will know that Activision were the absolute kings when it came to games on the Atari 2600 and beyond. Yes, their reputation may not be quite what it was in the 1980s, but the people who run that company now aren't the same people who ran it back when they were making classic games that were great fun and worked straight off the bat. So the Activision anthology had to come into the collection thanks to James showing me that this was a thing and it's here now forever and I'll get to play some classics on a modernish console and I do like doing that so much. Next up we're moving away from the PlayStation 2, dropping down a generation onto the PlayStation. And I really will put this out there, I wish you people out there would stop saying the PlayStation 1. It's not the PlayStation 1, it's not like the Xbox One, it's the PlayStation. But I digress, let's move on to the one and only game that I picked up for the PlayStation this month. And that game is Spiders the Video Game. Now I have never played Spiders the video game but I have seen plenty of gameplay footage on it on YouTube. And I will also point out that I have two great fears in my life. One is injections and two is spiders. Now fortunately the spider in this box cover isn't holding a syringe. He is holding however what appears to be a shotgun and a bowie knife. And it's exactly that insanity that drew me to wanting to eventually pick up spiders. Now it's not a game that you see a lot in the wild, you can pick it up if you go on to eBay and maybe pay a little bit more than you need to, but if you keep hunting it will eventually appear in your local retro video game store, or car boot sales, flea markets, or those wonderful yard sales that you have in America. We don't have them over here unfortunately, but it will appear eventually, this spider with his gun and knife. It's in my collection now and I'm actually looking forward to playing as a spider and that's something I never thought I'd ever say in my life. Next up we're moving down a generation again and away from Sony because there was no Sony the generation before. So we're moving on to Nintendo for me and the game that I picked up is probably going to please Stu over at 2T UK and he's probably going to have a dig because yes, 
Again, I picked up some Nintendo cardboard. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't hold anything against anyone who has the insane levels of commitment to want to hunt down good quality, old school Nintendo cardboard. It's just not for me. But this came along at a reasonable price. It was one of the very few SNES games that I played back in the day. And not only that, Super Mario Kart is a stone cold classic, there's no doubt about it. So when I saw this, really cheap, really, really cheap, I just had to pick it up. So that's Super Mario Kart for the Super Nintendo coming into the collection and this one will actually get played as well. I will play this the way it's meant to. So, Tootie, more cardboard. Thank you. Enough. You don't need to comment. Okay? Next up, we're moving down a generation again and away from Nintendo and onto more of a home turf for me, and that is the Sega Master System. And I'm sure there's a few of you guys out there are glad that I have fully embraced the Sega Master System. And the first game I'm going to show you that I picked up recently was Spider Man on the Sega Master System. Now, yes, a lot of you guys out there, like Ollie over at 8 Boy UK and Clint over at Retro Rewind, are really, really happy that I've decided to start collecting and playing Master System games. But I thought I just can't please one group, so I decided to pick up the Spider Man game just to put a smile on Jay from Square Pegs' face, because we all know he loves a good Spider Man game. And also, an exceptional Spider Man video, and if you haven't seen Square Pegs' Spider Man video, I recommend you pop over there after this and get that watched but Spider-Man for the Master System coming into the collection haven't played it yet looking forward to dusting down the Master System and getting this one on though Next up, and still with the Master System, it's one of the items that I picked up when I was recently at Forgotten Worlds. Now, if you haven't seen my Forgotten Worlds video, that's another one that you can pop along and check after this. But one of the things that I picked up when I was there was a game that I've actually been after for a while. And yes, it's a Master System game, and it's Ghostbusters. Now I haven't played the Ghostbusters port to the Master System but I have heard it is one of the best that's out there. I did however play Ghostbusters on the ZX Spectrum back in the mid 80s and even as quite a young gamer I thoroughly enjoyed that sort of franchise business manager Ghostbusters game that the ZX Spectrum delivered. Now of course knowing that I do love management games, I do love tactical games, there's no real big surprise that I was drawn to that sort of management style game. I do however believe that the Ghostbusters game on the Master System, though very, very similar in some aspects, is maybe just a wee bit more arcade action than the ZX Spectrum's desire to make you a franchise manager rather than just a Ghostbuster. So I've got Ghostbusters now for the Master System. I'm looking forward to getting this one in and giving it a play and comparing it to my beloved ZX Spectrum Ghostbusters. Next up, we're moving away from the games, well, sort of anyway, and a couple of pieces of hardware. Now, the first piece of hardware, I blame this completely on Russ over at Retro Bear, because, again, it was another pickups video. He showed he picked this up, and I just had to get one for myself. It's a Retrobit Super Retrocade. Now, we haven't had a chance to even unbox this thing myself, and it's something that I might do in a future video. But when Russ did show this off, I mean, I'm an absolute sucker when it comes to micro consoles, mini consoles, remakes, and anything like that. I'm just an absolute sucker. And firstly, I put into my head, this is a games console with multiple games that I can throw in a jacket pocket and just take anywhere with me. And that's a good way to think about it when you think about these mini consoles. And this one has a list of games on it. It would entice most people in. Final Fight, Mega Man 2, Joe and Mac, Burger Time, Double Dragon, the list goes on. It's claimed that it's packed with over 90 games. I don't know of how many of those games will be doubles of different games from different systems or not, but there is definitely enough on this little machine to keep me and probably you amused for a long time. So yes, for us, I do hate the fact that you show stuff off that then I've got to buy, but on the same hand, Retro Bear, I do really appreciate that you show me the stuff that I really should be buying and that's a retro bit, super retrocade. If you can get one, they're about £40, I would imagine about the $50 mark, well worth it if you don't have other ways to play these games or if you're just a nuts collector like myself. 
Now next up is the last item that I bought when I was at Forgotten Worlds and it's something that I've been looking to get into the collection for a little while now just waiting to get the right one at the right time for the right price because I went and got myself a ZX Spectrum Plus. Now most of you out there know that the ZX Spectrum is my first home gaming machine not the first one that I played on by any means but it was the first one that was bought for me. That of course for me was in 1982. It was a 16k rubber keyed variant of the ZX Spectrum from the very first release but a couple of years later after getting a RAM pack extension it took that to 48k I finally got a ZX Spectrum Plus which came with a harder shell it was pretty much the same ZX Spectrum inside it was 48k standard but it felt more substantial and due probably to the, the plastic casing and the almost proper keyboard rather than the rubber keys of the original Spectrum but this was one of the Spectrums that I had when I was making my way through my gaming journey and it leaves me only two more to collect until I've got every Spectrum that I had back in the day so that would be the plus two and the plus three so I'm halfway through my collection of the ZX Spectrums that I had back in the day and I was so happy to find this at Forgotten Worlds pick myself up the ZX Spectrum Plus and I'm definitely going to be playing this one properly because this is a composite mod already in it I can hook it up to a normal modern TV and again I'm going to shout out Russ over at Retro Bear I will be using a tape player and tapes and loading games the way they should be and yes the rest of you you know I do like to emulate when it comes to the Spectrum and I'll probably make a video as to exactly why but this is here now and I'm so happy to have a ZX Spectrum Plus into the collection and one that will be able to play in a modern TV with ease. So there you go my friends, that was everything I picked up in the last few months and what did you think of that haul? Was there anything in there that got you excited? Anything that you already have that you love yourself? Or anything that you think I should fire into the sun and it should be forgotten forever? Because interaction between you and me well, that's what makes YouTube special. It does for me anyway. Thank you very much for watching as always. And until next time, of course, cheerio. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the other ones on offer here? And also feel free to subscribe if you want to see more in the future.